going on, Nick fans? What's good? Uh, welcome back to another edition of Sports to the Wire. For those of you who are actually new to the channel, I am your host as always, Rashid White. And today's video should be an actual, actual juicy one over here. Some uh, replacements just in case the New York Knicks actually loses uh, Mitchell Robinson, Robinson to free agency there. Let's get into the article here. I kind of like some of these choices here. And I guess some of these players are actually better than what Nick Robinson can actually do. But the first one will be Thomas Bryant. And let's get into his stats. All right, so Thomas Bryant, while he may not be generating a ton of buzz heading into the offseason, Thomas Bryant is a talent that can help a plethora of teams looking for big men help. Uh, should they lose Robinson, this will include New York. And through the five-year career in, <clears throat> in, in the association, uh, Bryant has proven himself to be a multi-talented center who can crash the board, swap shots as easily as he can space the floor. Okay, yeah, this is... Hmm. I think there might be some heavy competition for this one. And, you know, and let's, hit me up in the comment section. And let me know, should you keep Nick Robinson or do you actually want to see him depart or if any of these players that i'm actually mentioned mentioning uh, you know will actually fit the bill but there is a problem though let me finish this up there is a problem with getting these young players and i think a lot of you guys and gals understand where i'm going with this here all right so uh what's this three point percent oh 43 percent shooting from deep hmm Oh yeah, man. That's the I mean, shit. I mean, as you can see in the Boston series, seven six wingspan. Wow, six ten two forty eight seven six wingspan, and has a high motor, and probably just a better overall basketball IQ than uh, Mitchell Robinson here. So let's see, maybe a different opportunity, a different situation would actually really help. So the next one will be. Oh, uh, Nicholas Claxton went healthy. Robinson has proven himself to be a fantastic center for the Knickenbockers. Uh, yeah, it's true. But Nick Claxton, so he's actually with the Brooklyn Nets, and he is becoming a free agent. Uh, he was drafted in 2019, and he has a lot of upside. So he was actually pretty decent in the playoffs. Uh, he's been injured a lot, um, but the athleticism, I do agree. So when playing on a team with Kevin Durant and Kyrie, uh, often sometimes simple role players are overlooked by both fans and the media. So it's understandable if one doesn't realize how solid of a talent Claxton is, and in fact, uh, how similar he is to New York's own Mitchell Robinson. I don't know, man. <sighs> I don't know about Nicholas Claxton. I mean, we watched him in the playoffs. He went one for 10. Um, he is working on his game. I don't know. See, the thing is, I don't know if Tibbs actually has patience for young players. I mean, there's a lot of development that has to go into Nicholas Claxton free throws. I, I understand he can actually hit threes. Um, but I kind of think they want him coming up and setting the, uh, the, the high screen and become a rim runner. And, but I haven't seen him when he does, you know, uh, drop, drop down. Like they say, he collapses down low. Can he make these passes out to the corners? Uh, it would be good. Let's see what they also say. They say about, uh, yeah, he has to get stronger. That's one of the things too. That because I you know I watch a lot of Brooklyn Nets game. He has to get stronger, which he does. He you know he, I think he put on about ten pounds uh, of muscle there. So and I think his ceiling may be a little bit higher than 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 uh, Mitchell Robinson there. Um, let's see. So this postseason we saw the twenty three year old. Uh, post career highs all across the bo board due to increased minutes, where he averaged 8.7, 5.6 rebounds, and 1.1 blocks on an incredible 
Yeah, 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 yeah. 67, 67. But he has a lot of weaknesses, mainly, I think, uh, the floor spacing aspect of it. Can he hit some mid-range shots? Can he hit the three-point shot? And if they actually kind of close out on him, can he actually uh, dribble one, two times, get the pull-ups? I mean, it's a lot of it's a lot of actual work with Nick Claxton, but as a backup uh, uh, big man, I mean, but they, they say it, even Andre Drummond actually said it, that the Brooklyn Nets are extremely high on Nick Claxton. So they, I don't think he's actually going anywhere. But um, maybe I think some of these three players they're gonna actually have to overpay on, similar to what the the uh, the, the Jeremy Lin contract. But um, he is a restricted free agent, and I guess they don't have to go into the luxury tax to actually um, to sign him. And the good thing about Nicholas Claxton is that he can actually. Um, for the most part, I'm not saying he's a hundred percent on it, but he can actually, you know, he has great lateral movement for a big man, uh, and move his feet and, uh, you know, definitely that rim protection though, but the free throws, I mean, there's a lot of work with him. So let's go into the next one. It's a three Mo Bamba. All right. So it says over here. Uh, people seem to forget that Mo Bamba was a sixth overall pick back in, in the 2018 draft, and instead we view him as arguable, arguable bust and more passion project headed into the summer where he'll be a free agent. Uh, as we said, Bamba was drafted in the, you know drafted a high lottery pick. That doesn't mean anything. There's a lot of high. High, high draft lottery picks. And just because you picked six, we had number one, uh, Darko Milovic. Um, I'm not sure if I pronounced that accurately or not. But he was a bust. I mean, there's a lot of lot of high draft picks that actually uh, becomes bust due to, you know, a lot of different reasons. Not be able to defend. Um, can he actually read, let's say, certain passes in a sense, though? Um well, you know, we'll see. I mean, so Bob, all right, hold on, let me get back to this. So because of the crowded uh, front court, Bob struggled to see consistent playing time through the first three seasons of his career. And as a result, is, is uh, his countenance, I'm sorry, his counter stats took a major hit and so did his status. However, each time one of these three plays departed from the rotation uh, one way or another, uh, see, he's actually been doing much, much better. It's saying so through 71 games and 69 starts. Uh, Bamba had himself a career high as he posted solid averages of mm, all right, uh, 38% shooting from well, 48% shooting from the field. And 38% shooting deep in 25. So, I don't know. I mean, if you give him a, a, a big contract, I don't know what type of payday he's actually looking for. But if you give him a big contract and now you're expecting more out of him, I mean, these are impressive. I mean, this is way better than Mitchell Robinson in a sense, though. Especially, I like the, the 38% shooting from three and the 48% field goal shooting. That's pretty impressive. 10.6 points a game. Uh, eight points. I'm gonna have to watch some more of his, his his games and actually see. I'm gonna go back on YouTube and actually see what's going on with him. Uh, he was a six pick, and why is he actually? Um, why is he rated so low? Why you know? Uh, so seven foot, seven ten wingspan. We gotta see defensively actually how he is though. So we'll see. All right, we'll wrap this video up. Let me know in the com uh, the comment section there. Do you think any of these Nick players actually will, um, you know, fit better in than uh, than Mitchell Robinson? There, uh, let me know down in the comment section. If you like the video, please like, comment, subscribe. Certainly share this video. When you share, the universe certainly shares back with you. Peace.